Walls can be placed by opening the Wall tool in the Home tab. By default, a basic generic wall type will be chosen. Walls can be placed by clicking Start and End Locations. Curtain walls can be placed in the same way. First, let's change the wall type to Curtain Wall. And as with the generic wall type, we can select the beginning and end locations of the walls to place them. Walls can be changed to curtain walls even after they are placed. Using the Modify tool, we can select the wall we want to change and change its type to curtain wall. If multiple walls are selected at once, they can simultaneously be changed by changing their type to curtain wall. Once curtain walls are placed, they can be edited in much the same way as generic walls. After selecting a wall, let us assign a new temporary dimension. Using this process of editing temporary dimensions, we can change both the length and width of our structure. Once curtain walls are placed, let's change the large panels into smaller panels by changing the curtain grid pan. Let's change the larger panels into smaller panels by changing the curtain grid pattern. First, we will select the curtain wall that we wish to change and edit its type properties. Currently, the vertical and horizontal grid patterns are set to none. Before editing these type properties, let's duplicate the type and rename it Curtain Grid Example. Now, let's change the layout of the vertical grid pattern to Fixed Distance. This will allow us to enter a fixed spacing for each of our vertical grids. Let's also change the horizontal grid pattern to fixed distance and assign it a new spacing also. Once the patterns are created, select OK to create the new type. Grid patterns can be easily changed by editing their type. We can change the spacing and repeat the process until the desired pattern is achieved. If we look closer at the panels, we will notice that they are not all equal sizes. The first panel is slightly thinner than the rest. This is because the length of the wall is not evenly divisible by the spacing set in the grid pattern. To change how the extra panel space is distributed, we can select the wall and change the justification property. Currently, the justification is set to beginning, but by selecting center, the uneven panel will be moved to the center of the wall, which is often less noticeable. There are other ways that we can define a grid pattern besides fixed distance. Let's edit the type and change the vertical and horizontal grid pattern layout to fixed number. When done, this will gray out the spacing option, as Revit will calculate this value based on the desired number of panels. Select OK to apply these changes. We can change the desired number of horizontal and vertical grid lines by changing the wall's properties. This option creates equally spaced grid lines, and therefore there is no need to alter the justification. With the grid pattern defined, we can now create mullions, which are metal borders used to support the panels. With the wall selected, edit its type properties. 
As with the grid patterns, there are both vertical and horizontal mullions. Let's change the interior type to rectangular mullions for both the vertical and horizontal mullions. We can also change border 1 and border 2 to rectangular mullions. This will apply mullions to every grid line segment that we have created. Once these options have been set, we can select OK and the mullions will be displayed in our model. 